How about well, let's play a little game here? Christian Kirk or all let, right. Let's start easy. Christian Kirk or John Brown? Oh, it's Kirk for me. Yeah, that's the easy one, right? Well, John Brown's producing in your lineup right now, so I don't know how easy it is, but I will say that if playing Dynasty here, yeah, I mean John Brown, he lost our confidence for two full years, and that's it. Right. But uh, you know, so I can't, I can't, I can't fault you if you would lean John Brown there and you're playing that short game. But if you want to b- play the long con on him, you got, I think you got to go Christian Kirk there. I'm about ready to put Kirk in my lineup. I mean, it's not maybe it's not I need that. to see it one week. Yeah, but he has he he catches that touchdown or they they throw him that touchdown that he's wide open on and he's got you know seven or eight more points you're ready to play him i think yeah, yeah. well it's probably a 20 30 yard touchdown yeah right. this is not this this is not a sit start question no you it's know, not this is but a, that but that's kind of what you turned it into is was was that well john brown's producing right now so i can understand but for me let me get that christian kirk what no, about I you? you. Take, I so you keep him Brown then? No, I, I'll take the asset in Christian Kirk All over right. John Brown. I'm saying it's just, yes, John Brown is startable every week, and it's not like he's just, it's not like it's a fluke and he's a bad player. It's just, no. I, I'll, but, I'll, I'll take the asset. But if I'll I take, could turn what I paid for Brown into Kirk, no doubt. Boom. No All doubt. All right. Good Let's, point. And wait to, wait to rephrase that at the very end there because you're right. Because what whoever's owning John Brown this year has the point of uh, acquisition, the cost of acquisition is minimal. And you just probably paid a late first, early two for Christian Kirk. R O I. Christian Kirk or Geronimo Allison? No, oh, give me Kirk. We talked about it on Patreon last week. I'm, I'm selling Brown and I'm selling Geronimo Allison. I mean, I just. Casey's trying to upgrade. Yeah, I didn't pay anything for those guys. I don't have a ton of faith in Geronimo Allison long term, and, and neither do I. I don't have a ton of faith in uh, John Brown long term. So. I'd rather get the uh, the young guy who could develop with Rosen, and, and uh, you know when we made rankings in the middle of summer, like Kirk was way up ahead of all all of these guys. Obviously, they've played some games now, but right, uh, yeah, John Brown startable every week. Geronimo Allison's very startable every week, but I, I want the the long term asset. I don't know what you know Geronimo Allison and and John Brown's value is going to be. I definitely feel better about Geronimo Allison's long-term outlook than I do John Brown. He's on a one-year deal with Sickle Cell. Allison's out of there next year too. If they don't re-sign him, it's not his second year. It's not his second mm. year. Well, I'll, I'll double check. But if he's out of here, so he'd be there next year though. It can't be his fourth year. No, I was, I was thinking he was a rookie last year, but he wasn't high. He doesn't have any extra years on his contract because he obviously was a, a later. No, but there's four built in there, right? I don't think it's an automatic four. Shit. I got it. He's a restricted free agent next year, so. So they'll have him one more year. John Brown, you know, on the one year deal, whatever. I, I'll still take Kirk. I'll take I'll take Geronimo. And I don't know what the Kirk. futures there are. I'll take the future with Rosen. That's fair. What about you, Biko? You gonna you gonna cash in Geronimo for some Kirk? Well, I like what Casey said there. You again, same. So my answer same as last question. I'll, I'll take the asset. That's what, when we were doing the mock it up before. You, well, no, that the uh, when we were doing the mock drafts, the start mock startups uh, going into the season. There, we were talking about that same type of thing. You take your Chris Godwin's and those types of guys, and and you put them on your bench. And what? Well, Chris Godwin's been startable since week one, but you couldn't have really seen that coming with all those players. Nobody Fitzy threw for four hundred yards. He's been three weeks startable, ago. but it's been it's been pull your hair a out. Non sustainable startable. Well, exactly, because it was four hundred yards three year, weeks in a row, and actually nobody in the history of football has ever done that. So Ritzy Fitzy did that. And but the, you know that was the point is you, those types of guys, your Christian Kirks and all those, you put those guys on your bench as assets for the future, and then you plug in the John Browns and the Geronimo Allisons and the, that type of stuff. So yes, you you trade if if there's any of that if it is if it's anywhere close to possible to trade um, those types of players for a Christian Kirk forward looking asset, I'm down. All right, Nelson Aguilar, Christian Kirk. Um, give me Kirk. It's a toughie. I think it's a little more toughie just because uh, Aguilar has has some draft capital, and he obviously played very well with Wentz last year, and we haven't seen uh, uh, the full Eagles yet. Wentz just got back in there, and then Alshon just got back in there, and this week... The yips are back. The yips are back. So, um, 
I could go. I could go with Kirk too. I don't think if there was a rookie draft this year, it, where a free agent draft, if if um, Alshon, if if Nelson Aguilar was in the rookie free agency draft, I don't think you're taking him over Kirk going into the season. So no, and you and you weren't in the off season. I'm pretty sure that Kirk was going in front of Nelson Aguilar in most drafts. Um, I agree with that. You I, got you got Alshon coming back. Obviously, you had Foles the first week, couple weeks of the season. Nelson Aguilar, I've, I've been a huge. Not, let's not get this twisted. I've been a huge Nelson Aguilar proponent. I like Nelson. I think he's a good player. I stuck by him when he had the yips. If I, he was getting open, if he yeah, could just did. catch the ball, he'd yeah, be you fine. Did. You did. You stuck by him. But now people have somehow come to the conclusion that he's a number one receiver for the Eagles. And I heard that all off season about how, oh, well, why would I take Alshon when I can take Nelson Aguilar? x amount of rounds later well you're taking alshon because there's potential stud number oneness with alshon and you saw that immediately with his return back to the eagles offense now uh aguilar was playing with Foles for some of that time but he did play with a game without him with wentz and it just i mean it hasn't been great he's not the number one he's not what you were seeing out of alshon is completely different what you were seeing out of uh Aguilar. Aguilar. Completely agree. Alshon and comes in there for right away, seven for 80 in a touch or something like that, 26 points. And he's going to be at the, probably around the same spot you drafted him last year, if not further back, because I don't know how great this season's really been for Aguilar, right? really. And then when you wanted to get down to it, the, the Eagles were scoring so many points that Aguilar's was being propped up by these touchdowns um, yes. in, in most of the season last year, which is fine. I know the Eagles are typically going to score points, but I, I just... I think I don't think it takes much for Aguilar to stay where he is or drop further back, even if he has a decent season. And I think Kirk's going to just continue to more move forward as the season goes and he gets on the field and people see him a little more and his name is in some more people's mouths. I agree with so that. So I'm, I'm I'm going Christian Kirk. It's actually eight for a hundred in a touch for Alshon Jeffrey and but and and piggyback. It was overtime. Right. That's true. It doesn't but, matter. Stats are still stats. Well, yeah. 12, they do they lie. Don't lie. If only they, they do. 12 targets, five catches for 22 yards for Aguilar, and we saw a handful of those catches that t- drops were near the line of scrimmage that weren't really great plays for and Nelson. Downfield he were, did have some downfield yeah. ones that were costly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just one of those things where I completely agree with Casey. Going forward if, with and Zach. Don't get it twisted. I like Aguilar on my squad. Yes, Yes, but with with the with the ex with the running back situation they got going on there with actually maybe a little bit better trio or even whatever the word for quadruple set of running backs would be quartet maybe mm, uh, solid effort. the solid quartet over there for running backs and Zach Ertz <laughs> and Alshon and Jordan Matthews back in the fold I, maybe the volume that was there for Nelson Aguilar and the big play touchdowns might not necessarily be adding up to his value growing at, at the type of pace that Kirk would. So I agree with Casey on all that. All right, let's keep moving along. Christian Kirk or Tyler Lockett? You want this one? That's a toughie. Um, Love what I see out of Lockett right now. He's you gotta like, looking strong. Yeah, like what you see out of Lockett. And now um, with a couple drops, the probably some maybe some bad antics on the sideline or in the meeting rooms that coaches are talking about. Brandon Marshall's might be getting swapped out of there so that's uh that's not great for for b marsh but good for lockett um yeah i I saw lockett come into this game where a game where doug baldwin was back and seemed to be fairly healthy and was getting led the team in targets lockett was right there behind him doing basically the same thing he's done all year what i really like about lockett is that his awareness on the field when that when it's it's at the end of the half or end of the game and he makes a big catch which he makes third down conversions he comes up huge for this team when they need him he's always like ready to get to the line of scrimmage you never see him like oh i just made a first down let me run 10 yards up and (laughs) point down on the first because i made a first down like nah bo the clock's running let's go he's just right back to the line of scrimmage. i like that on it ready to go if what you need to be liking about lockett is russell wilson needs somebody to throw to it's true the tight ends haven't done it disley just blew his leg off and the running backs are not exactly lining up to catch a ton of passes so even with Baldwin back, that Baldwin back 
it's got to help him. It's just it's got to help keep the drive alive and move the ball down the field. Because let's face it, the Seahawks offense hasn't exactly been tearing it up. Russell Wilson's been letting you down, borderline benchable, finding better quarterbacks out there these days in this pass happy league. So you got to like what you see out of Lockett. And for me, I, I, that's probably getting closer to a toss up, um, 50-50 ball there uh, with Lockett coming back around tied to a Russell Wilson who's you know both of them not going anywhere anytime soon yeah I I think we you, you guys talked about Baldwin a little bit coming back and I think I think in that situation I know some people don't like to talk about how when somebody comes back it makes another player better and because how could it because there's less volume for that player but well, I, now Patrick Peterson has somebody else to worry about well I just I do think in this situation with Baldwin being back on the field it definitely helps Tyler lock it out yeah um, so it is it is a little tough for me I, I i always go back to the tyler lockett that there is a cult following for tyler lockett so i think there is a good market for tyler lockett seems uh, like there's a cult cult following for kirk too well, well sure but i mean it just it wasn't it didn't get to the point of where the oh, locket, tyler lockett the locket to ab comparisons were happening a, a year or two ago and then health and all that other stuff didn't work out for him but well christian kirk didn't have that he wasn't he didn't have that matt Harmon reception perception right, right. yeah he, well, that's what i'm yeah, saying yeah so but I, I still don't think you're to the point where you could get a first for for Lockett, and I think Kirk could still get you a first, even though having not done anything. And I think the same thing talking about Aguilar. That's a fair enough saying point. that you know nobody's hey, giving you a first for Aguilar, right? And, and nobody's giving you a first for Lockett yet. You're so right. I think, I think, uh, I think I'm sticking with Kirk here. Although I do like what I've seen from Tyler Lockett right now. Obviously, you're way more excited about most of these guys in your lineup than Kirk, Kirk. right now. So there's the quandary, but. Yeah, uh, dynasty wise, I, I think I want I want I want my Kirk. I like that. One last thing on um, uh, Tyler Lockett here before we go is week one he had caught three out of four targets for a touch. Week two, five out of seven for a touch. Week three, four out of six for a touch. And last week, five out of six. It's not like the ball sailing all around him. You know what I mean? If if Russell's throwing it near him, he's catching it. So you got, I like that. He's coming up with it. He looks great, um, and he did sign a three-year deal. Uh, in That's the closest one for me so, so far. Yep, agreed. I, I have Tyler Lockett on my team. I don't know if I would send out that trade offer I, I, to get Kirk right now. I, well, any of these guys, if you need them right, right now, you're probably not sending that trade offer out because it's just going to cripple you if for you the need next them, couple of weeks. Yes, but you are in bad shape if you need to have. I mean, I had we had Tyler Lockett in a, in a lineup this week with a you know twelve man team with two flexes. You know, it's if you don't have the that's what I'm talking you, about. If you don't I have mean, the I'm, starter starting positions, it's hard to move any of these guys we've been talking about really. Mm -hmm. But I like way I like the way Casey phrased that, and that's really. Um, I didn't, I didn't come up with it to say it, but that's a lot. That's how I I try to judge my trade deals. Who, not not that I'm not here to have fun myself either, and and but I I will I will sell a guy for a guy if I think that you Christian Kirk could get you a first round pick. Tyler Lockett's probably not going to do it. Aguilar is definitely not going to do it. That's that's a good way to think about it. We it's and and, and that's, that's not the end all be all. No, but, but that's that's your that's your good but that's your good way to bring it back to a baseline judgment call because in, especially like every every trade talk anytime you're talking when we do, trade calculator when we try buy sell when we talk about buy sell hold or this kind of game right here that Jay Wayne's got us playing it every type of potential trade is always so circumstantial to the roster that when you get into this you basically have to equate them to draft picks because you don't know anything else mm -hmm. so I like what Casey said there is. Tyler Lockett will be getting close to getting that Colt following. Maybe somebody will start to scratch their head about a first round pick, but Christian Kirk is still, you know, he was he was, he might have been one seven, one eight, one nine on easily in somebody's rookie draft. He could have been somebody's top receiver. Yeah, on that's fair. That's fair. I guess I could. I guess I could make this deal. What I else you got take, for us? I could take it. One more. Let's take it to another Tyler. Uh -oh. We just put Tyler Lockett up against uh, sure. Christian Kirk. Uh oh. How about Tyler Boyd? Uh oh. So far, Kirk's won every Kirk's, one of these. Kirk's undefeated. Well, Kirk's we talked four no. We we talked about uh, we did buy sell hold on the Patreon last week because we ran out of time and we talked about John Brown and we talked about Geronimo Allison. We also talked about Tyler Boyd. Out of those guys, Boyd was the only one that I'm not selling. Mm -hmm. um, this year, we didn't come out and salute the Tyler Boyd flag previous years we were all over the tyler boyd flag we kind of let it uh sail at half mass there for a little while <laughs> now it is back to full it's full back. on it's flying <laughs> and 
it's the, full mass. It's full mass. What with what Bill Lazor is doing and with what Andy Dalton's doing right now and what I've liked about Tyler Boyd is coming to fruition out on the field right now. So I would have a tough time. Like I'm, I, I think Tyler Boyd right now is fetching some first round picks from some no people. doubt about it. So no diggity. Th- this I oh, just said Lockett was the closest. This for me is is tossing two balls up in the air and and uh, you know I don't I don't really know which one I want. I guess right now because I like the long term outlook of Tyler Boyd and what's going on and I like I, I, man. I think I got to go Tyler Boyd here. Uh, for me, it's Tyler Boyd, and I'm and because I can I'm start very, him right now and feel confident about it. Yes, and I like the long term outlook is get, is basically where yeah. I was going. Well, Tyler Boyd is uh, I've Casey. Casey's a huge Christian Kirk guy, and and as we all are, but Casey's definitely a bigger Christian Kirk guy than I am. So I I can probably he and I were both leading the charge for. Um, Tyler Boyd. So I think I can probably slip back into the Tyler Boyd a little easier than he can there. Still can, only 24 Tyler Boyd is. and Yeah. And, you know, A.J. Green is an absolute monster stud. Had some issues with staying healthy lately. Obviously, you got the horrible injury to Tyler Eifert uh, this this game against the Falcons here. So he's out and obviously ain't coming back. So that, take, that, that puts more targets on his plate. And we've seen it a few weeks in a row. Obviously, the biggest thing here for me is – don't forget that all of this Tyler Boyd stuff has really started to happen. Not that it wasn't happening in the first two weeks, but this big stuff has happened without Joe Mixon in the lineup, and maybe there's a lot more handoffs coming for that Bengals, but they've seen a little bit better offensive line this year, and I, maybe, I don't think it's a coincidence. You see a little bit better offensive line, and the weapons are fairly healthy outside of the Tyler Eifert right now, but you see a better um, – quarterback see Andy Dalton playing better than he did last year I don't think that's there's never any coincidence when the offensive line plays better and the quarterback's not running for his life mm-hmm. every play now sure you still have some down the stretch of that game you have those aggravating Andy Dalton plays where he just doesn't have that pocket awareness to get out of Vic Beasley's way you know he's coming mm-hmm. he slide up a little bit and stop getting your arm hacked a couple plays in a row but he's just upset because he had money on him they still covered. They got he got he threw it to AJ and they they won the game. Much less covered plus six. Mm. Love it, love it. They had it, but he definitely sweat. He made me sweat. I didn't like that. Didn't need the sweat. But uh, yeah, I'm Tyler Boyd for sure. With the three games over twenty points, I mean, I got to give the nod to, to Tyler Boyd here. I guess, and then it's not to say that Allison and and all those other players we named haven't been producing and yeah, all that. Other not stuff, quite like this. I like what I've been seeing from Tyler Boyd in this offense. All right, let's do one more. Load it up one more time for real, for real. It's the last one. Promise. Tyler Boyd, not Tyler Boyd. We just talked about him. <laughs> Christian Kirk or Mike Dub Williams? Who? Mm. Mike Williams. Gotcha. Mike Dub. Dub is short for W, uh-huh. which is the first letter of his last name. Mm-hmm. Mike Dub. Mm. This is a sticky one. I just... I, I'm going to try not to be a homer here. I'll let you lead off here, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so the guy in the orange Clemson shorts and the Clemson t-shirt, will he please stand up? I also have an orange hat. Don't forget that. <laughs> I got to take Mike Williams over Christian Kirk. And it's a guy we haven't talked about a lot, and at some point I would like to talk about some Mike Williams because there's a ton of hate out there for him. I don't want to open up that box right now. Is there? There's, there always has been. Well, yeah, for sure. Matt Kelly is leading the charge oh, just tons thing. of people about how unathletic he is and how he's just a bum and all this other stuff well as soon as matt kelly comes out and puts his flag on someone being really bad then a bunch of cronies jump on top and then it changes twitter sphere and <laughs> cronies it's, it's uh or buzzards or minions or whatever yeah, demeaning whatever. name you want to call yourself from being a fan of his uh I mean, but but look what he's done this season. You're seeing what he was drafted at f- to do, which is score touchdowns. And I know, I know, you let you down this past week. Um, who the the, the uh, Chargers play? The Niners. The Niners gave him everything they could handle. <laughs> gave him everything they could handle. Had him on the ropes. Probably should have won that game. Uh, but but what you see, Mike Williams do? He's out there scoring touchdowns. I think he's got. Has he got three already this year? Sure, I think so. Uh, two in one game, and and you just see him going up in the end zone and coming down with the ball. And when you got and, and he was he's a top ten pick in the NFL. I think he was seventh, and and they're finally getting what they what they basically paid for, which is a guy who could score touchdowns. So 
not that I don't think Christian Kirk could score touchdowns, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna swing for the fence here with with this massive double digit touchdown scoring potential. So if I don't take Mike Williams here, I'm basically right now at this point rating Tyler Boyd over Mike Williams. Yeah, because I, take, I just took because uh, I just took Tyler Boyd right instead of Christian Kirk, and when I was doing my preseason kind of rankings of figuring things out this was you know all these rookies whoever it was and mike williams were always a tough kind of toss-up because one you hadn't seen a whole lot whole lot of mike williams Mm -hmm. um very little until he started making flashes in the preseason but i haven't seen anything right but i like i always liked the prospect of mike williams even though a lot of people didn't he's a bigger bodied guy Alshon Jeffrey kind of player uses that frame well knows how to use what he's got I think he's just is a is a has the innate ability to play the position he is the separation as right. we like to say his body with some of these bigger bodied guys mm-hmm. um, who don't necessarily need to run away from everybody he knows how to use that frame he's not afraid um, of contact and you've seen that in this in the in this season you've seen him in in situations where balls are placed in, in good positions, he knows how to box people out, use the, use the long arms and all that stuff. This is tough for me. Basically, I think I'm, I'm trading essentially what you were last year as your, you know, anywhere from 1-9 to one twelve in your Mike Williams in your fa- rookie drafts to anywhere of Kirk being in the same uh, vicinity this and year. Mike would have been higher had he not hurt his back so early, I think. M- maybe. Maybe I think a lot of people just didn't like the athletic profile of what Mike Williams was putting out there, pushing him down the board. So in my opinion, I think you're trading kind of last year's two years ago's pick for this year's kind of pick. So I think it's almost it's kind of a stalemate here for me. Uh, And it's crazy that I just took Tyler Boyd over both of these guys. And now I'm saying that they're kind of a stalemate. (laughs) So it's just uh, uh, there's nothing wrong with just being like, you know what? Tyler Boyd's just been awesome. And 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 I, fifteen targets in a game and ten targets in the game before that, uh, nine targets will do that. Uh, you know, if you got to catch them, you got to do something with them. But Tyler Boyd's done it. I'll take Mike Williams over Christian Kirk. I'm, I've maybe down the line, the target ball it'll be one of those Mike Evans versus Keenan Allen. Uh, those two guys would, you know, the two youngsters would love to be in their conversation. But maybe down the line, you'll have. The big body Mike Williams that scored in touchdowns, and you'll have Christian Kirk crushing receptions, and then probably get to the same point totals in different ways in a Marvin mm-hmm. Jones, Golden Tate esque type fashion. Right. Um, but I can see, if, you know, let's say short term, the next three years, if Philip Rivers stays playing, then I can see the Philip Rivers throws touchdowns. He's thrown 30, around 30 a year for 10 straight years or something like that. I could see. Mike Williams coming up with six to ten touchdowns are fluky. Six to ten touchdowns for the next. He's a double digit guy. Yeah, if he, he, if he especially if he becomes more of the guy. Yeah, and I think what I what I what makes it even more of a stalemate for me is like just like you said, like they can come up with their totals in different ways. Right, and I think they're both kind of trending towards the line of being the guy on their team at some point. Yeah, um, both with good players in front of them. Obviously, Larry's a lot closer to the end of things than. Uh, Keenan Allen is yeah, sure um, but I mean maybe not Keenan Allen rupture spleen but you got to you got to produce you got you got the higher ceiling of the Chargers offense with Philip Rivers and you got you know Rosen who's a younger Next cat year who's could coming be, along it could be you know saying that the Cardinals offense is up there with the top producers and you know Absolutely you, you don't could. know what's going to happen you don't no you don't and Rivers could say I'm but having my 29th kid change. so I'm, I'm going to stay home this is I, all true <laughs> but something's got to change for it, something fundamentally has to change and we saw just a teeny bit obviously the quarterback change but a teeny bit of hey let's get let's not forget that our running back is top two or three in the league uh, for the Cardinals but they got a they brought in a defensive minded coach and they brought Same in with the Chargers, though. Mike McCoy, who just doesn't is, is, do, uh, could you know, be fireable. Yeah, he's a mid. Yeah, he got fired last year and halfway through the season. So um, we'll see. How, we'll see. Oh, how that all goes. we can but hope I, is that the Cardinals fire their offensive coordinator. That's always a shot of life halfway through the season. <laughs> Whoever does it, Bill Lazor, <laughs> as true. we just mentioned with Tyler Boyd and, and Andy yeah. Dalton, Bengals got better last year, a lot better. You know, sh- gave a shot of lot life to that offense, much like these quarterbacks coming in gave a shot of life to their offenses in these past weeks. And Good we've points. seen it with the Ravens. Uh, and, and they love firing a coordinator halfway through the season and going to the Super Bowl. Happens. So, 
one more thing and take it for what it's worth is for uh, my defense of Mike Williams over Christian Kirk here would be off the field. Uh, I know from being a Clemson homer, I know everything about Mike Williams. I know he's a stand-up dude. He's I own Mike Williams. He's just humble. No, I don't know Mike <laughs> Williams. I know Mike Williams. We text. <laughs> I have him on my fantasy team. He's huge. He's tremendous. Uh, he's a great dude. He's a hard worker. He's humble. He's a non diva at the wider at the diva position. Um, we don't gonna, think Christian Kirk is any of those things. Well, Christian Kirk did get arrested for like public to damaging a property after he got drafted. And he so did. if you're gonna get That's arrested true. for jerking around in public, jerking, jerking around. around, maybe you could rephrase that. <laughs> messing after around. you get drafted, <laughs> messing around. He was being a jerk. I think this was a. I think this was a. <laughs> this was around. this was at the um, whatever the golf tournament is in Phoenix. Yeah, well, yeah. That's, that's the, the rowdiest the golf one where tournament. you get hammered and whatever. Yell at people. You just get drafted sure. in the second round, and then you're gonna go and get arrested. I like. I'm not trying to hold that against Christian Kirk too much. I mean, I was still willing to draft him, and I still took him over a bunch of players. There's here. a good chance if I'm Christian Kirk, I'm getting arrested at that golf tournament. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just it just. That that's a bonehead move, and it's never gonna. And, and there's something like that. That the only thing is that something like that could happen in the future. And Mike, I know it's never it gonna happen, happen with to Mike anybody. Doug. Well, you can you can you you raise me character. I'll raise you some neck and back issues that could Ooh. help cancel out some. And I and I don't I don't ever I hardly ever weighs into anything that I'm yeah. gonna say. But if we're gonna talk about it, yeah. I know Mike Williams is a very good guy. He's got a diploma from throw Clemson. some chips in the middle of the table there. Uh, but. But uh, got his diploma. You like that? <laughs> a little, little inside joke jab there. But you you raise me character. I'm going with that's there's, fair. There's some some back injury, some risk of a risky spot on people's bodies with yeah. Mike Williams. Well, that's nobody fair. well nobody wants to hear neck and back. Yeah, unless you're that that rap that song. Yeah, let's my <laughs> neck. Let's let's get out of here before you start singing a rap song. <laughs> Yeah, right, I, I think can't we, sing or rap, so that's we've, not going to play out. I well. think we've officially exhausted the Cardinals. Yeah. Good good for Larry Fitz here. Gets a nice little uptick. You're not as scared to start him. Chad Williams, uh, definitely somebody I'd be fishing around for. Just Ricky like Seals we were, Jones. Sure. Ricky looking to Seals see him Jones. come alive. Th- that's a, a good stab. But Chad Williams being a guy who Larry's maybe on the way out, they seem to kind of like this guy, Chad Williams. I think you could go fishing around. For, for cheap for for some Chad Williams obviously he just caught a touchdown oh he's still uh, this very, past very week cheap. but Probably I mean, a you lot could of throw wires. you could throw a third or, or or a fourth at somebody and see if you can't put him on your team for later I like that they've been holding him for a year and a quarter now not seeing anything so you could probably get him maybe for a third but I definitely go fishing see if he's out there on offense is on the on the up definitely all right let's take a quick break and we'll be back with more Mary to the game. 